Hey everybody, Andrew here. Um, yesterday I did a video about recoiling um, the Aspire head in the Nautilus. Now this is the Nautilus here and as I said you can go up to 14-15 watts with that no problem and uh, it works really well. So there's a micro coil in this with cotton. So that's what we replaced in it and it's working great. So that was the coil that we put, or the head rather, that we put the new coil into. Now, so that got me thinking, well, there's the little brother of it, so the original Aspire head beside it. And I thought, well, can we do the same thing in this? Because, you know, certainly if you try and rebuild this in the original way with the sort of dual coils crossed over like that it's really bloody difficult to do uh, now I did it um, and it worked okay but it didn't work anything special and frankly it just wasn't worth the effort it was too much too much effort so anyway I just thought well maybe if I actually take one apart and try and do the same thing that um, I did in the full size or sorry the new bigger size head that maybe it might work so it did, and uh, here it is. I've got a head in here, and this is turned up to full volume, up to 4.8 volts, which you'd never get a normal Aspire head up to. Uh, but we've got the recoiled Aspire head in this. Now it's a nano coil, it's a really small coil, um, and we, it has cotton in as well, and it works a treat. I mean, it really does work a treat. It's fantastic. So anyway, what we'll do is we'll go down close and I'll show you how I built this one. Right, this is what we're going to uh, need to put together this uh, little coil to go inside the Aspire head. So essentially what we have got is, well, pliers, because I don't want to burn myself again like I did yesterday. That's for when we're heating up the coil. Um, we've got 28, uh, sorry, 0.28 Canthal, which I believe is uh, 29 gauge AWG, but uh, 0.28 millimeter Canthal. Uh, I've got a tweezers here. We've got um, our nail clippers for clipping the excess wire. We have got a head, obviously. We've got our uh, wool, cotton wool which needs to be unbleached or boiled or organic, but either way, it can't have any impurities in it. We've got a one of the little um, flat-headed, uh, um, or rather blunt-topped uh, syringe um, heads there, needles, and then we've also got a, uh, uh, a torch there to be able to torch the canthal. So what I'll do is I'll move all this away now, and then we can start uh, putting this together. Now the first thing we need to do is basically take this uh, metal piece off the top here. Now I find the easiest way to do it is uh, essentially to have it in place in one of the cups, you know, where, it's, where it is meant to sit. Uh, and then if you stick that onto a mod of some sort. And then what we need to do is basically just take a little pliers and we have to jiggle this off. So just a little bit of a jiggle and it'll come off like that. Now you can see what's happened there is the filler has actually come off as well. If we look inside, all it is is just an empty um, little metal sleeve with the two holes and that's where the juice comes in. What we're left with here is that sleeve, which is this is the filler, and that goes inside there on the inside wall of that. Uh, but we can leave that out because, frankly, it's easier when you're putting it back in to wrap it around the rest of the gubbins rather than having it in there. And I'll show you why in a minute. So we can put those to the side. Now we can take this back off now. Like that. And what we now need to do is remove the coils that are in there. You can see the, uh, the two crossed coils there. So to do that, just uh, take out the little pin at the end. Then we need to take out this rubber grommet at the bottom here. Just take that out like that. 
that's what that looks like there. And then when we look inside there, we can actually see the tails coming down from, so there's four of them in there, coming down from the coils. So what we want to do here is essentially take these coils out. So to do that, all you have to do is just push through like that, and there's the coils. Now, when you push through, what you meant, will need to do is make sure that this stuff in here, which is, I'm still not quite sure what it is, it's, 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 um, it's not plastic, I, I don't know what the hell it is, it's, maybe it's an insulator of some sort, but uh, we need to keep, make sure that stays in place. Now, I'm using this, a blunt syringe uh, needle, which is about one millimeter in terms of diameter and I'm going to give it nine wraps. Now what we need to do with these wraps is we need to try and keep them as close as we possibly can. Now what we can do as ever is sacrifice the first wrap. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and pull that down nice and firm and then we can undo this at the front end and then basically just shove it all down to the end like this here making sure that the end one doesn't end up rising up over the others but something like that should be fine there and then we can just uh, pull on these a little bit just to uh, make sure that they're nice and straight. Same with that one there. So that's what we have there. Now I've placed um, the little coil in the pliers here, making sure that I don't end up overlapping uh, the ends on it so that everything stays side by side. And then what I need to do is just give it Bit of a flame to get it nice and red. And that should do us there. Now be careful of your pliers because they're going to be uh, seriously hot after that. So just make sure you put them somewhere that they're not going to burn anything. So we end up with our little coil like that, which is nine wraps of 0.28 Canthal, which is uh, 29 AWG, I believe. So what we can do is just put this back on here, just straighten our ends out again a little bit. Also cut our ends off because we don't need uh, anything near as much as what we have there. So we just uh, chop them down to a manageable length like that. And what we're now going to be doing is putting the cotton inside this little coil. Okay, cotton wise we don't need much, but uh, basically what we need to do is just uh, sort of roll this down into a bit of a straw. And you can sort of stretch it out while you're doing so to make it uh, thinner. Now I'd always advise always, always, always wash your hands before you work with cotton because any of the oils or anything that may be in your fingers uh, will end up transferring into the cotton and give it a bit of a funky taste. So wash your hands before you start uh, playing around with cotton. That would be my advice anyway. Now what we need is uh, at one end just to get it nice and pointy. Nice long point because remember we're going through a very very narrow opening on this one. So we'll try this. and Let's see if I can actually do it on camera. So just to shove that through there like that and then pull it through. Now that's a little bit too thick so the great thing with cotton is you can just thin it out to something like that there. So what we've got there should be just about right. Now we don't need much of this, so we don't need big long tails. 
but I think something like that should be fine. And then what I'll do is just free it up, buff it up a little bit at the end like that. So we'll end up with something like that there. Now we need to put this here into this here and we're going for the top little notches. You see the top notches there? Uh, I did try it with the lower ones but it just seems to work better on the top ones. So essentially what we need to do is get your two leads together and then just poke them through down to the bottom and then just pull the two leads down like that. So what you'll end up with is that nestling in to the top. Sorry, just like that there. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. So once we've done that, what we need to do is put the little rubber grommet on. So the easiest thing to do is to hold this coil in place with one finger like that, turn it over, and then the little rubber grommet is going to go over one of these legs. Doesn't matter which one. So we'll pop this over one leg. And then basically, as you can see here, basically push it down into the opening like that. Okay. Once you've actually got your grommet in place, what you need to do is just bend each of the wires over to the side like that because what we need to do now is just pop in the pin into the bottom like that. And now what you need to do is just check that position wise everything is okay up in the top. Now this has gone and turned on me a little bit but I'm just going to shove it over just to make sure that everything is lined up as I want it to be. And that to me looks fine. Now snip the wires off the side. One. Two. Then what we need to do is let's reposition this again just slightly, get it right into the center like that. And then we're just going to snip off a bit of the cotton on each side. Now, it's a bit of trial and error really because what you need there is enough so that it's going to be pushing against the side of the filler material that's going to be around it, but not too much that you can't get the top on. Because uh, remember, we have to wrap the filler material around this. So what I'm actually going to do is just going to go a little bit closer in on it. To maybe there, and then on the other side do the same thing. A little bit closer. A little bit of an old haircut. So that's what we're left with there. Now, what I find is easiest is at this stage to basically uh, just wet this down a little bit because it means that it sort of stays in place a little bit better and it's a little bit more controllable as to what's happening with it. So we'll just wet that down a little bit like that. And the next part is kind of the trickiest part of all. And uh, what we need to do is essentially wrap this here around this here. And then what we'll be doing is pushing this sleeve over the top. So let's wrap this around. See if I can show you. So I've wrapped that around like that. 
then what we do is just basically place this over it and then shove it into place. And what you'll need to do is give it a really good push to press fit it back into uh, position. Okay, now it's all pushed back into place. And as we can see on one side there, you can see the filler through there. And on the other side, you can see the filler through there. So that has to be happening because otherwise it's just not gonna wick properly. And if we look inside there, we can see the coil. So hopefully that will do the job for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna prime it by uh, just popping a bit of liquid inside just to get it going, you don't want too much. And then what we need to do is find something to put it into. Okay, so we're just gonna pop it into this uh, Aspire here. Screw it in. Now one thing I didn't do was I didn't check what the uh, ohms were on it. So this was nine wraps of 0.28 and that's giving us 1.5, which is pretty much bang on for me. So we take that off. And then let's screw this on to the top of my rather uh, beautifully colored uh, Aspire. Screw that on like that. A little bit of liquid around the place because of having primed it. And now we can see what it looks like. So there we have it all put back together. Now I'm going to, uh, as ever with these things, going to start it off reasonably low just to uh, make sure it can bed in properly and uh, that we don't have any major issues. So it's a 1.5, so we'll start it off at about say 3.8. This is on a, a twist. Uh, it's been sitting for, I don't know, about five minutes. You need to let them just sit and, uh, you know, so that the liquid can actually absorb its way right the way through the whole, um, you know, the filler material and uh, the cotton that's inside it. So um, let's give it a go and see what happens. Right, not a huge amount of vapour yet. Now, as ever, with primer pulls, basically what that does is it draws, it creates a vacuum, so it'll bring more liquid in uh, quicker, so. Let's see what that's done now, see if it's made a difference. Yeah, there's a bit more coming out. So let's up this now to say, say about 4.2. It's definitely getting underway now. Right, the making of a cup of tea later. And we'll see what it's like. Uh, now I've just uh, stuck it onto this uh, MVP here. And I have got it at four volts. So let's see what it's like. It's very good. This is the one that I did um, earlier on this morning. Uh, this has got a different uh, liquid in it. This has got custard cream in it. And it's just chucking it out. It really is. And that's not very high either. Where is it? It's just over four. Let's torque it up to the top. Up to 4.8 volts. Gorgeous. And um, at 4.8 volts in this, that little microcoil, it keeps up. It really does. Now, if you're really, really pulling on it, you know, and sort of chain vaping or whatever, I'm sure at some point it's not going to be able to keep up anymore. But um, it's working like an absolute dream. The other thing is, is uh, some people give out about these particular aspires saying that there is a very tight draw on them. What this does is this seems to loosen up the draw a little bit by putting these into it. Gorgeous. 
Now back to this one here and we'll bang this one up to 4.2. So this was about 10 minutes ago this one was actually coiled. Let's see what this one's like. Yeah, not quite as much as in the other one. But it's building, it's building. Go up to 4.5 on this. I don't want to go the full way on this one yet because I, I just wanted to bed in a little bit further. And again, no burnt taste. Really good flavour. I mean, if you know microcoils and if you know cotton, and if you like that type of a flavour, um, this is what this is. I mean, it's just a, a nano coil or a really small micro coil with cotton in it, and it's just getting its liquid from the sides, from the filler that actually goes around it, uh, through the two little holes, and then the tank is sitting above that and feeding into those two little holes. So. For me, it is just a revelation to be able to, you know, get an Aspire head, which is working as well as um, either of these are. This one has got a little bit of way to go yet. They do take a while to bed in, but this one, which has been going since this morning. It's pretty much faultless, in my opinion. So that's it. That's how you do it. Um, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're able to uh, replicate what I did. And um, cheers, and we'll see you again soon.